Cruisin', Cruisin' USA. Tonight we're going to be looking at the 1965 Ford Galaxy by AMT. Hello once again, model car builders. My name is Trevor Oslescu. I'm the owner of Monster Hobbies in High River, Alberta, Canada. And I'm standing right here beside my brand new Coca-Cola model kit display. Come on down, check it out sometime. So welcome back to another What's in the Box video. And today we are looking at the 1980 edition Cruisin' USA 1965 Ford Galaxy Lowrider by George Barris. Says so right there on the box. It also says 1980. Now I picked up this great kit at one of the model kit shows that just happened well in 2019 earlier in the year and I wasn't really going to open this because of the vintage and everything but then I was checking around on eBay and whatever for the prices of these kits and they're still very very reasonable even though this kit is from 1980 which is a very very long time ago. Here's how old it is. <laughs> okay so, we're going to take a look at this fantastic kit over at the Monster Hobbies Garage, which is just a table with a camera set up, but <laughs> don't tell everybody that. They might want one themselves. So, without further ado... Oh, but before we begin, you know that little song thing I sang at the beginning of this video? There was a video game that came out in 1994, which was really cool, also entitled Cruisin' USA. Now, I don't know if they got the idea for that from this, but in that game, there's a lot of cool cars to race. It's from 1994. It was in the arcade. I used to play it a lot when I was a kid, as in between building models, of course, and wasting all my quarters. <laughs> but it's a really cool game. If you can find one somewhere, go play it, because you get to race across the United States, and that's really amazing for a guy living in Canada. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But... Um, you get to race across the United States. You start off with a red Ferrari, but you can choose cars. You can choose which part of the USA you're going to race. You can choose automatic or standard. And there's a uh, red Ferrari, a yellow 1939 Chevy, and sort of a purpley silver colored 63 Corvette in the, in the thing. And I always remember... You had to do something like turn the wheel to the left, turn the wheel to the right, pre press the gas pedal twice or something like that. And all of a sudden it would unlock a school bus and you could race the school bus as you were cruising USA. So enough about the video game. Let's see the model kit. This one would actually fit really well in that video game. It would be cool to race this thing in the computer world. But let's stop talking about that. Let's see this model kit. Cruising, cruising USA. So now we are going to open up the 1965 Velvet Brute, the 1965 Galaxy Lowrider kit, the Cruising USA edition by George Barris. Now this kit has not been opened since actually it was sealed in the factory back in 1980, I believe. And uh, so now let's just take a look at this cool box. And of course here we have our car blasting out of a map of America with Cruising USA written on the front just like that video game of the 90s. Now here on the side of the box, i just zoom in a bit, we get this nice little write-up on George Barris. Of course now unfortunately George has passed on, but George Barris, renowned worldwide yeah, George Barris, renowned worldwide as the king of customizers, is now putting his creative touch to AMT model kits. Barris has been a trendsetter for the past 30 years, showcasing his work in magazines, movies, TV, and car shows, as well as influencing major auto manufacturers. Barris is also well known for his cars of the stars creation, such as Cher's Ferrari, Ringo Starr's 57 Chevy, and Farrah Fawcett's Foxy Vet. Now, as we move along here, I don't know if the camera will pick this up. 1980, Lindsay Productions Corporation. So this is at a time, I do believe Lindsay was out of England, the Matchbox and that. 
So this model kit came out in that time. Cruising USA model features rub-on transfer decals, lots of chrome and custom parts, personalized customizing instructions, posable steering, and opening trunk, of course. One of the cool cars. I've never actually owned this Galaxy before, but it did come out under round two in the 90s. Let's just zoom back here. Check this thing out. Yeah, see there's some Matchbox logo. Matchbox of it is uh, the English Dyke has car manufacturer. They have now merged with Hot Wheels. So that's uh, showing you how long ago this was. So let's see. Cruising down the boulevard in your restored and decorated classic. Has fast become the in thing. Now the cruisers and their younger brothers can build their dream car from AMT's trend-setting line. To duplicate the cover illustrations, we recommend the following plastic model paints. See instruction sheet for additional painting detail. Paints of cement not included. So, exterior is white, flat black, and red. Interior is light blue, silver, flat black. I love this, like, this <laughs> 80s type kid with this. Here, let's zoom in. There we go. <laughs> Look at this helmet here, and he's like on his surfboard, and he's like cruising down the galaxy stars and all this. Kind of cool artwork. Okay, so moving this back. The end of the box looks like the cover of the box. So let's l open up the lid on this baby and see what's inside. It's almost like sacrilege to open this because it was sealed for so long. All right, now we have sealed in bag model. Uh, one thing I'm going to do with this video is just show you how they packaged stuff in 1980, late 70s, early 80s. So all the white components are in one bag and they're all kind of loose in here. The instructions originally were right at the very bottom, but I moved it up here because I was going to do something. There's your glass. It's not in a bag. So these were really easy easy victim to getting scratched. Although everything's bagged in here, so it might have survived. Look at this, the shrink wrap here. It's like when you get a bag of crackers. <laughs> Look, there's five wheels in this. So pretty cool. And then all the tires are just spewed out in the bottom of the box. And here, these are not actually water slide de decals. These are rub down transfers, but they have held up really well. So it'd be kind of cool to, to put it on this thing, but it's so 80s. <laughs> actually, it's so 70s, really. All right, let's move all this out of the way and focus on to our instructions. Nothing wrong with the 70s. I was born back then, but I don't know. Okay, here's a little instruction sheet. As you can tell, it's not huge like like the new AMT type instructions. So let's just let's just zoom in, zoom in, eh? Okay, I'll just move this over to this side of the screen for a minute. Okay, so if you look at this, you have a silhouette of all the parts that you get in the kit, and they're all numbered. So this corresponds with what's going on in the instructions. There are some paint detail call out here, as well as painting suggestions and the uh, read these points before you begin. This is all in English. There is no French in this one. So Canadians, we, we get shortchanged. <laughs> okay, so here we have our engine block, the instructions for it. Let's go right in here. Right in there, don't be shy. Focus, focus for me. It's the best I'm gonna get. Okay, so the Ford Galaxy had a great big 427 cubic inch motor in it. And here it is. So we've got two parts going there in oil pan. Our exhaust hitters here. The, um, uh, I'm losing it again. <laughs> Our valve covers and those guys. Sorry, <laughs> got into the mood. All right, but you can see how it goes easily step by step. Those are the cylinder heads. 
All right, and then here we have our timing chain cover. Our ooh, what's going on here? There's our alternator going on there. Our fan, our pulleys, and this thing here. Oh, it's a water pump on the top. So I'm having to look at this from very far away. I should turn this camera on. Show you guys my setup here one day. Okay, so here's our engine going together, and there you've got your intake manifold with the two four-barrel carburetors and the distributor up front, and our air cleaner going on to there. Big monstrous motor. Now this kit does not come with stock wheels, so if you wanted to build this as a stock Galaxy, you might be able to get away with using the wheels from maybe the 66 AMT Galaxy. Uh, but for this one, you're getting those custom Krager mag wheels. Then we've got our tires. These are the ones with the uh, web in there, so you'll have to cut them out. Although there was a lot of tires in the box. Maybe we'll look in there, see if there isn't stock wheels in this. Maybe it's just the instructions don't show it. There's our interior with the console, center console with the chrome insert, and of course our gear shift going up there. And then in this panel we have our seats going in. It looks like there's two lap belts that would go in here. Then Oh, this is interesting. You actually have a chrome piece that goes in behind the seats that pops up in between the center armrest in the rear. Then in this panel we have our interior bucket, the dashboard and steering wheel going together, and now here you have these upper A-arms. Um, I... Oh, no, this is for the Ford F-style suspension. So yeah, these are upper control arms, and then the springs sit on here, and then go up into the... the uh, no, wait a minute. No, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm looking at panel 12 here. Okay, anyway, these go in there. <laughs> and now it shows our 427 dropping into the front here. And then this is an interesting configuration, because the actual trunk panel is separate and glues into the frame separately, and the gas tank up here... I do believe, goes together in two pieces. Like I say, this one is fresh territory to me because I've never had it. All right, so here the springs are going in between, just like in a GM. So this isn't the Ford F suspension. That I think that comes a little bit later, or like in the Mustangs. Unless I'm looking at this incorrectly. No, it does look like they go through there. So there's your steering Closable wheels with the lock pin that goes in there. you got to be careful when you glue these together to uh, push this through first and just a little tiny bit of glue in there so that you don't ac accidentally glue the pin in through the hole because remember this is all styrene plastic in here. Now you've got your tie rod going in here and your front linkage and brake brackets and then the back has a multi-piece rear axle complete with the um, uh, the stabilizers in here, the front and back, the shock absorbers, the rear springs, your drive shaft. It does have a metal axle that goes through, so that's always a good sign. I, I like the metal axles. Okay, and then we get into our back panel here. Okay, so they show the stock hood with the hood hinges and you've got your radiator. The fire or the radiator support wall is already molded into the model. There's your firewall and your glass going up in here. And it does say note remove pardon me. Remove the shaded area. That's for your big blower. Or your hood scoop. <laughs> okay, there's the body going into the interior there. And then we have the trunk. And note the cool parts, you get a, a, f a bumper jack with the handle. There's where that uh, fifth chrome um, wheel goes in into your spare in the trunk so that everything matches. And your hinges there for your trunk lid. This is kind of reminiscent of the, um, the Johan 1969, uh, what do you call it? The SC Rambler has an opening trunk in it as well. Uh, might be able to review that kit in the future. I'm not fully sure yet. Okay, anyway, so here's the back of the car, the bumper going on, and you get two rear taillights that go into there. The nice big square galaxy kind of taillights. 
Okay, and now there's that hood scoop that goes onto the hood and our front bumper. And in this kit, you do get the four uh, clear plastic headlights. And then it shows our big 427 with the NASCAR style uh, fresh air vents going in to your carburetors and whatnot in your air cleaner. Yeah, I guess it would be right and left-hand side of the air cleaner. That's how it goes. And then we have some instructions here on your rub-down transfers. So, I know not a lot of us use rub-down transfers. It was kind of a... I mean, they're okay. They're an old thing. Basically, you take the, uh, the decal sheet, or the transfer sheet, and you lay it right over the car, and then with a you know, like a pencil with no lead in it or something, or some other type of tool like that, you would rub down onto the transfer, and then you peel the film off, and the transfer sticks onto the car. And if you pressed hard enough, all of it will come on, but if you were a little bit light in spots, it'll actually rip a, a chip out of the decal sheet. So, not the most popular thing. Oh, and something fell over. Okay. Now that something fell over, uh, let's go over and check out the plastic parts. They are calling to us! So now we're going to look at the body of our 65 Ford Galaxy. And this one is really, really crisp. Nice detail. Like, this is a 1980s release. 1980 release. So this may... I'm not too sure. Write in the comments below if you know. But this one might actually be the first release of this kit. And that would explain why it is so crisp. And this thing is amazing. Okay, so we have a hole here for the hood and a hole here for the trunk. And if you notice, remember in one of the videos I was saying, take some styrene strips and glue them along here. So, oh, on the 66 Pontiac, so that the hood doesn't fall through. Well, you see this little tab here and this one here. Those two are there so your hood won't fall through and it will properly rest on the rad support. This little section here will be removed from the car. It's just a, a brace in the molding process. But look at this. Here's our hood, which we'll be reviewing in a minute, as well as the parts on this tree. But look at that tight fit in there. That's perfect. I've never actually seen a fit of uh, model kit parts as tight as on this. Now, there's our trunk lid here on these parts. And again, right to the edges, nice and tight in there. Usually there's a gap on other kits, but wow, AMT really made this one precise. And then of course, there's that hood scoop. <laughs> but that's a different story. Now let's actually take a look at the side of this thing from this angle. So there you can see uh, we've got the nice Galaxy script going on here, and then we've got our um, scripted writing up front the door handle, and the nice crisp door detail. There's the front of the car with the proper holes in there for those big air inlets, intakes, I guess. Uh, one thing about the Galaxy is that the motor that they used in this thing, they used in racing NASCAR. Nice and crisp in here. There are no mold marks underneath here, whoops, in the hood area, or in the uh, roof area. There are some along here, but they're not noticeable. You won't uh, turn your model over and look and see them. And then on the inside here, of course, is the uh, the parts where this was hooked onto the parts tree at the factory. These, of course, you'll have to file down and smooth so that they're as flush as this side of the body into there. Now let's uh, just turn this here a little. Let's see if I can catch this. See, there's our script right there. Nice detail. If you have some bare metal foil, after you paint your body, you will have to go down here on that nice strip. But it's a nice straight line. The roof also has straight lines to it. The uh, chrome detail around here is molded really, really nicely. And what else can I say about the body here? It's very solid. So. Let's take a look at the other components on our parts trees. And here we have our full perimeter frame chassis for our 65 Ford Galaxy. And the uh, front suspensions in these things back in the day 
were so strong that stock car racers of all makes used it through the 70s. And of course our car also came with a 9 inch differential which we'll be mounting up into here with the springs and the shocks and everything. And of course here we have this big hollow space. There is a trunk component right here that will of course when we flip this over will fit like that and if you notice here there are some nice reliefs in here for those tabs that are right there and there so then under under the hood in our front fender aprons of course we've got this indented area here and um, that could possibly be for the water bottle. Whoop. <laughs> I'm dropping it all over the place. All right, take a look at underneath here. Here we've got the brake cables coming out to the rear brakes and the nice detail, nice crisp detail in here and uh, on our mufflers as well. The dual exhaust and of course it's got the little exhaust tips on the end. Now if you look though they just kind of drop off flat here. So if you've got a file, you can file that just a little bit flat and then take a drill and drill these out so that the exhaust pipes look like real exhaust pipes. And yeah, that should complete our, our chassis here. Very nicely detailed, of course. And now let's take a look at some more components. Now we have our engine components for our massive 427 NASCAR inspired engine. Here we have our left and right engine block and the transmission on here is a proper a proper standard transmission. You can see the little shift plate here and uh, there you've got your starter motor, the distributor, the fan belt, or the alternator, uh, some piece I don't know. Oh sorry that's the timing chain cover. <laughs> There's our cylinder heads, our big intake manifold for our dual four barrel Holly carburetors. Then here we have our exhaust manifolds. These are the air intakes. There's our water pump and of course our oil pan. And you'll notice that these are all all molded in white. So the Ford had an engine blue color that they would use on here. Uh, and your transmission of course would be steel with some aluminum bits. There's the battery there, and I did make a mistake just a few minutes ago. Remember on our, our front fender wells I said there's an indentation here? That would be for your battery to go into, not a washer reservoir bottle. Just uh, was thinking of those old Ford bottles, the red ones that were bags that used to hook on. Remember those? If you do, write in the comments down below. If you ever filled one of those up, let us know. So let's go and check some other parts on the trees. All right, so I'm going to actually look at three parts trees in this little segment here because there are a lot of suspension components in this model kit all over the place on the sprues, which is okay. I mean, you know, so, so to save a bit of time, I'm going to take a look at this as if it was one big sprue. Okay, so here we have that bumper jack, and this is all complete as one unit, all set up. It just needs a handle off here. Then here we've got our Ford 9-inch rear axle, 9-inch rear differential, pardon me. There is the handle as well as the lug wrench and the little um, screwdriver type point for our floor jack, or bumper jack, pardon me. Oh boy, one of those days again. Okay, so here's our, our uh, firewall, and it's got these grooves here for the hood hinges, as well as our brake master cylinder there, and uh, the heater. Whoops. Okay, so here we have our front suspension components, our springs, our A-arms with the uh, open area in there, and then our lower suspension here, our Ford trunk lid, then over here we've got our Ford hood. There's the um, <laughs> the pinions, of course, for our front suspension. There's three holes in here, so you could actually put it to the bottom and 
uh, have the drag racing type front end nose in the air. The uh, center one for your, uh, what do you call it, your stock ride height and then the top one for low rider. There's the springs there. We have our front bucket seats. These are the wheels, the wheel, the back part of the wheel. Uh, there's a couple of braces and different lengths of our rear suspension components. And then here we have our tie rod end with the holes in it. These holes click into these buttons here. You only have one shot to do this, so make sure you've got it all painted and ready to go before you click them in. And then these holes on our king pins, that's what I was trying to think of, uh, they would go into holes in here and holes into the top. So I'm just going to turn this over here to look at the bottom of our hood. And here we've got our bracing in under there. Uh, there's a mold mark here and here and there and there, which will have to be scraped off with your number 16 hobby blade. There are a couple of mold marks on the suspension bits. If you can see them there. Uh, and the back of the firewall. Now, there's a bunch of uh, plastic junk in here on the 9-inch rear axle. The metal axle will be going through that, so if you've got a, a file, or even with your hobby knife, if you sort of scoop with the blade and clear those off, your rear axle will spin a lot better. The holes on the whoops, on that part of the axle would be for your braces to go into. These ones here would be for your shock absorbers. And then there's another brace that hangs off here and goes down to the chassis somewhere. Okay, then let's move that to the side. With our hood, we have the nice, if you can, camera can get this, it has the F-O-R-D for Ford on there. And then underneath we've got our bracing with a bit of that fireproof mat in there. And they give you a line in here for you to cut out your uh, hood scoop out of. And a few mold marks there that you can take out with that hobby blade again. And of course you have to take these mold marks out of here so they don't interfere with your steering mechanisms. Now we have five other sprues, actually four, and a steering wheel that fell out. So on this one we have our rear bench seat. We've got the second part of our interior, or our, our trunk actually is sitting in here. <laughs> and then our radiator and some more suspension components. This of course is a uh, bracket on the back. These are the shock absorbers. There's your hood hinges and your front sway bar, anti-sway bar. Sway or anti-sway? You be the judge. No, anyway. <laughs> okay, there's the bottom of the trunk and our rear fenders. Uh, nice detail on there but sadly there's those mold marks there that are right into all that detail so that's never never any fun but it's still there oh and on the back of our radiator there's a few holes as well and all this will have to be cleaned up with the file before you put it onto the body the body <laughs> yep they're hinges they go onto the under the hood that's part of the body <laughs> anyway Ah, okay, so there's the hood scoop here, and our two-piece gas tank, as well as our console, and the drive shaft. And then these are the seat belts that would go on the seats. So again, let's take a look at the detail on here. Some nice ribs on the gas tank. And then our console, and it has an insert for the chrome shifting uh, shift pattern. And then our seat belts are there. And these would go this way, possibly, with... Oh, yeah. The coil is either on the side, down, or on the top. Like, that way. I'm not too sure. I'll have to, uh, to figure that out when I glue it into the model. Okay, so, again, we have the uh, mold marks in there. Underneath the hood scoop. So your hobby blade and then here we have our dashboard some real nice detail in there it's got that elongated speedometer as well as a little bit of detail and texture down here 
put a strip of chrome across there with bare metal foil and uh, you got your vent there for your defrosty window and then we have some wheel backs right here there's a lot of flash on these even though this might be the first run kit nice deep wheels for those tires and final component is our steering wheel and this is of course a three-spoke Ford style steering wheel there's the uh, let's see if you can pick that up yeah these of course are hollow in the arms and it's got the nice finger grip texture going across the back and our final white plastic component is the interior tub now this is kind of interesting it it's hollow in here which is very reminiscent of the convertibles where they would have all the mechanism drop into here now, I'm not too sure if there's a 66 there are 65 galaxy convertible out there uh, or if there was a 65 convertible galaxy model kit out there that's what I should be saying but this would share that interior with it if any of you guys have ever built a convertible of this or if there was one let me know in the comment section down below uh, okay so we have some very nice detail in here there's all that pleated upholstery and then our long door panels as well as the hand cranks for the windows now there are some some mold marks down below this one does have the correct interior uh, uh, pedals floor pedals in it so there's your clutch your brake and your gas pedal and then there's some holes for your shifter to go through the center console would go into these holes but if you don't want to use your center console build this more of a nascar type of thing you would just put your gear shift right through the floor so underneath is actually a lot smoother than the top you'll have to open up the flash out of these holes for things <laughs> consoles and shifters and all the rest but the nice part is this has no seats in it so without the seats being in here it actually makes it a little bit easier to get more detail on the side panels but nothing is as good as separate side panels like in some of the new uh, round two type model kits so there's our interior tub and now let's go into the chrome parts and now we get to my favorite part the chrome tree now this chrome tree is very basic it you just get enough components in this thing to actually build the model and not go beyond it. Um, I don't really understand uh, George Barris's part in this kit, considering that it's basically stock. <laughs> Maybe he he uh, suggested the Kriegers go in here. I, I don't know, but anyway, it's not quite like a uh, 1940 Ford kit that Barris had a hand in that had like 5,000 parts to it. But anyway, the parts in here are nice. They are a little bit on the promotional model side, just to a slight degree, as it has 1965 molded right into the front and rear bumper in the license plate area. So if you want license plates on here, you have to scrape those off. Or you could actually just carefully mask this and paint, paint it like a museum piece where you have like a white license plate with red numbers. I've done that on a few things. I made a mistake. I thought the taillights were molded in red plastic, but they're actually chrome, and you just use some red transparent paint into the four sections here, and a should be a clear white dot in the middle for um, reverse lights. I'm not too familiar with Ford taillights, however. Anyway, let's just move on a little bit here. Okay, so there's our air cleaner right, right here with the two little T ends for those great big induction tubes. There's our valve covers there, nice chrome ones. There's our center console piece with the four speed shifter in it. There's our two Holly carburetors and the fan chromed up. There's our gear shift lever and there's the tail lights there. So there's our rear bumper with 1965 molded in it. The chrome on this is pretty nice, a little bit kind of orange peeled in a way. If you look here, you'll see these center dots. Those would be the actual light bulb in your lenses. So that's kind of a cool feature. 
the grill is in there. Nice. You could add in a little bit of black wash Citadel paint. And there's our emblem in here for the Galaxy. It's only on the, the driver's side. And then, of course, we get our five Krager mag wheels here, which are pretty cool. And that's about it. If you turn this over, it's nice and flat. There is a number here, number 533. Uh, and, of course, these little mold marks, which you can sand this out and paint this all black in here, flat black. Make it disappear between the uh, firewall or the rad support wall and the back of the grill. And that basically is our chrome components for our 65 Galaxy. And next up we have our transparent glass. And this is much like the promotional models where they have the front and rear windshield attached together with these runners. That, of course, when you take your uh, model kit and turn it upside down, you will see these up along the roof. And usually they would suggest spreading glue along here and pushing it up onto the roof to glue it in place. I would not recommend doing that because I've had a few model kits where the glue's actually melted the roof line right onto here and sucked it in. <laughs> so it's not a good recommendation to do that like that. Here's our four headlights, for our quad headlights in here. You of course would cut these out and then cut them apart from the parts tree and carefully glue them in. There is a little bit of a relief in here on the windshield for our hood hinges. There is not one for the trunk hinges though because it's far enough away. Now if you want, if you feel up to it, take your hobby saw and go right across there and there. Cut out this rear window and cut along here carefully. You could make some sun visors out of styrene sheet and then glue them on you know, behind here. Or carefully shape this as if the sun visors are molded in and then glue it of course into your car. Next up are the tires and in this kit for some reason AMT has actually given me six tires even though there are five in the kit. Five including the one in the trunk. Um, now these ones have the web into them. Not www.com but you know the this uh, spider web inside the tires. So in the molding process when they created these there was a bit of strength into it. Now, these ones don't look like they have the web, but if you actually turn it over, they do. These are Goodyear uh, Rally GT tires, all six of them. There is a bit of flash in here on some of these, so you'll have to use your uh, number 11 hobby knife. Cut the flash out carefully there. Not Try not to widen that too much so that your wheel has a, you know, a, there's a gap between your wheel and your tire because it got cut in there by mistake. You have to be careful to cut these out. Again, using your hobby knife. Now the tires themselves are quite nice. They've got uh, this nice tread on the bottom here, but you can see that they're really wide. This would be you could you could basically use these for a NASCAR type tire, although NASCAR usually runs slicks. Although um, not being much of a NASCAR guy, I'm sure they would run something like this in the rain. You guys let me know in the comments down below. Uh, now, <laughs> there's six tires in this kit. And keep in mind, one of them is supposed to be for the spare. Now, that begs the question, how many of you guys out there have had a car where you get a flat tire and you go to change the spare and the spare is flatter than the tire that you're going to change it to? <laughs> how many people have had that before? If so, let me know in the comments down below. Uh, and luckily you get a six tire in here, so if you actually have one go flat and the one you're changing is flatter than that one, you've still got one extra. <laughs> so let's just hope all six tires are not flat when you do this. And finally we have our rub down transfers. Now there's a little bit of a discrepancy between the actual box art model and these. And I don't know if I can get my camera in here. Oh yeah, so here comes the box top. And I know this is a little bit blurry, but you'll notice that the uh, the shirt here is blue. These, I thought this was a dark blue, like a navy blue, but it's a black, red, and an orange. Okay, now if we take the box away, you can see that the colors uh, represent the current German flag more than uh, they do on the box top. The shirt is gray, and um, you've got black 
sort of an orangey red and then yellow so very much more like the German flag than you know how it looks on the side of the box which would be more or less the American flag type colors but anyway I won't hold that against George Barris I think the only real Barris type thing is this decal sheet with Cruising USA it's not like again not like uh, the 1950 Ford from AMT that's just loaded with custom components and all that this is more like uh, artistic you know but anyway there's our Galaxy Rider and these of course you would just you know put this up against the body and then press down and rub and then you pull pull this away and it will leave the decal on there is a backing paper on here just so you guys know this we, we do these kind of things with cub cars as well um, can't really show it too much but okay let's see here can you see there see so you pull the backing paper off then you would put it on your car body wherever my car body went then with the paper off you rub it down of course and then you peel off the plastic film because it's like like there's a film and then the decal is up this way onto that film and the sticky part of it is between sandwiched between the paper here so you can see like he's really whited out on that side but on this side he's got all the detail so this side here is the side that sticks to the plastic in your paint when you peel this thing off so that's how the rub-on transfers work but I prefer the water slide ones because you have you have uh, an option of course when you got your water slide to have this thing soaking wet so that you can maneuver the decal into the proper position then you take your uh, paper towel or your your drying cloth or whatever and you press on the uh, the water slide decal and you squeeze the water out and once water is squeezed out then it clings onto the car and I prefer that to to rubbing this thing and having it accurate and having part of it slip and you you know and if you don't have it all pressed down perfectly you crack the decal in certain spots but it's still a cool uh, cool bit of artwork and that concludes our look at the Cruisin USA 1965 Galaxy Lowrider kit well, I hope you enjoyed that great review of that Cruisin' USA 1965 Ford Galaxy Lowrider by George Barris. And I hope you guys are able to check out the video game that was in the arcade by Nintendo N64 or N Ultra 64, <laughs> however that was. And uh, what else can I tell you? There was a lot of cars in this series. That were really cool so check those out also you'll have to go on to ebay and all the rest and i know some of you guys have this entire collection which is also really awesome so don't forget to like subscribe and share to this channel tell all your friends about it if you're in high river come out and check out our coca-cola display behind me and until next time happy model building